In this video I'm going to show you how to export uh, parts and assemblies from Onshape uh, as step files and then import them into Inventor and then how you can apply materials to those step files in Inventor which is a little bit different to uh, how the way you would normally do it. So to begin with you're going to need a, an assembly in Onshape so I've got a little wall display here with a, with a, a, a wall behind it you may have your assembled object in a part studio like this one or you may have it in an assembly um, it doesn't matter which which is the case uh, the way to get it exported is simply to right click on the tab at the bottom here and select the export option so you'll see here it, that will appear in an assembly or in a part studio so right click that hit export and you want to use the step uh, for format here. Make sure you select a suitable name. Um, once you've done that, hit the download here. Make sure it says download rather than storing it in the tab. You want to actually get it onto your machine. That's going to ask you where you want it saved. So make sure you save it somewhere sensible and give it a sensible name. And once you've done that, we'll open up Inventor and we'll have a look and see how to import it. Right, so now that you've downloaded your Onshape files, you need to create a new assembly in Inventor. Make sure you use the standard millimeter version, and then we're going to drop that step file into here. Now, normally in an assembly, we would use the place command to place Inventor component files or Inventor assembly files into the assembly. Because we're using um, uh, these step files, we're going to need to use imported place imported CAD files instead. That's going to allow us to find um, non-Inventor CAD files. So if you just go to wherever it is you've saved that step file and open it. Inventor is going to need to convert that into some sort of format you can understand and read. Um, all these uh, set settings can just be left as they are so just press A OK and then your assembly will be dropped into your assembly space. Now my um, inventor is set up to drop the component or the assembly in and lock it just first off. Um, yours may not be so you might need to just uh, to, to drop to place it just to begin with and then if you press OK it gets rid of all those options to add more. If you haven't, if yours isn't locked then just right click and ground it here that make it easier to um, move around without messing it up. Now <coughs> because this isn't a standard inventor assembly if we expand the feature tree here you'll see that we don't get all the parts that make up the assembly. So normally we'd see the parts, we could double click on the parts and we could go in and edit the parts with their various sketches and, and features. Because it's a simplified step file we don't get that. Um, as a result, at this point here, because we can only select the whole thing, if we were to try and change the appearance of that, let's just randomly pick a, a thing, a colour, this is denim, every single part is now affected. So that's no good to us because we want to obviously have different bits, different materials. We're just going to undo that. So what we need to do instead is if we double click on the assembly like that, see now that we're in kind of in a part space and over in the feature tree now we can see the different parts that make up our assembly. Now they're not full inventor parts again with um, sketches and um, uh, CAD features, extrusions and so on. They're just, they're just solid models um, but we can at least now select them individually. So what we're going to do is look at how to put materials, or not materials, put an appearance of materials onto those parts so that we can give a more realistic um, illustrative effect. Now um, usually we, may, we would maybe come up here and select um, material appearances from this list here. Now I find it quite hard to navigate. Unless you know exactly what it's called, um, it's quite difficult to, to find different parts. So I'm going to show you a different way of doing it using the um, appearance browser which is this rainbow circle here. If we drop that up, I'm just going to move this out of the way so we can see them. Um, <clears throat> what that does is it shows us all the uh, different appearances that are already in our document. Now because this had colors in it in, in, in uh, on shape it's picked up these different colors for the different um, materials so that you can see there's a transparent one that's for this kind of glass place this blue one is obviously that blue there so all the appearances that are currently in use in the document are on um, on there already. Don't need to worry about that uh, we're going to look at adding um, more relevant materials. Now the beauty of this browser is that as well as being able to see what the different um, uh, appearances look like and also more sort of their full name um, we can also search for them so if I wanted a brick effect for that back wall I could search brick and it's going to show up all the brick based appearance options that I have. Um, in doing so you can see as well it's actually the way it organizes the different appearances here and different materials um, 
in these different uh, kind of folders. So you've got masonry, we've got different sorts of flooring, um, <coughs> stonework, etc., etc. So you can find things that way, but I find the easiest way to look is actually just to put a search in here. Now let's uh, let's have a look for one. Um, we'll go for the one soldier. We want that one. Uniform, running bricks. That one there. It, once you've found a um, uh, an appearance that you you want to use, if you add it to the document by pressing the little arrow, it appears up here. If I just close the search box, you'll see now in my um, document appearances, I've now got that brick, that running uniform running burgundy brick pattern is appearing. So what I can do is if I go over here and select the part, now the best way to select it, rather than that, which has just actually picked up a face, is to select the parts from the feature tree here. You can hover over them and you'll see which ones have coming up. Um, if you've called your part something sensible in on shape, they may they may come in with names, I'm not sure, but either way you can you can identify where they are. So that's my big wall at the back. So if I now click on the brick pattern there, it's now applied that brick pattern to my wall. Um, let's move on to the um, these little letters. Maybe I want a black for those little letters. So if I searched for black, <coughs> it's going to give me all the appearances that inv include black. So even black, brown, stripes, smoked. So we've got all sorts of options. I just want maybe a a black paint would be fine for for my purposes. So I'm going to add that. Um, I'm also going to put a, a chrome. For these, um, for the knobs, so maybe oh, that do, maybe satin that will do. Add that one as well, and you can obviously go through and search um, for whatever materials appearances you you want in your project. Now, um, if I'm going to apply them to the the letters, I need I need to, again to find the letters. One thing to note is if you select more than one, then it it, it continues to to select the ones you you've done. So if you just put the wall, um, uh, the bricks on the wall. And then you went across to start now doing the black letters. You'll see that the wall is still selected. So if you were to select black, everything's gone black, including the wall. So make sure. I'm just going to undo that. Make sure that you have only got selected the objects that you want. If you want to clear the selection, just press the white space, and they all all the selections disappear. So let's get those three again. Press black, and I've now got black lettering. I wanted to find the uh, two, if I can maybe get that one as well, all these metal parts, oops, just missed it, let's go for that one and that one, and I'll make them chrome, okay, <coughs> so we can keep going, we can keep adding parts, uh, so adding appearances to the different parts until we're happy with them. Now two other things I'm going to show you, one is the um, how we the, the, looking at this brick background? We may think that the bricks are a bit big. So when, when we put a, like a patterned appearance in, it could be bricks or tiles or maybe a wooden floor. Um, the scale of the image that is being applied may not be right for our project. So how do we how do we change that? Well, if we come over here to um, where we've got that particular appearance, which in this case was the uniform running burgundy, we've got an option now to edit the appearance. So if we click on that, we get the appearance editor up, and you can see that this particular appearance is made up of an image um, and a little pattern that it's going to give the illusion of texture when kind of light hits it. We could also add a tint if you wanted this to be a different colour. Um, but what we need to do for this instance here, it's quite common, a common um, modification, is to edit the image. So if we go to the right and hit the little drop down arrow, we can go edit image. And we've got some options here. Um, we can change the size. So that sample size that we're using here, look, is a metre by just uh, one, and, one and a bit metres tall. So if we were to change the scale here, the size of this, we're going to alter the size of the bricks on our appearance there. So if I was to just, let's make that, if they're a bit big, let's go 80. So the bricks now immediately are, are smaller. So you can keep fiddling with that until the size meets um, whatever um, you're hoping it's it's going to look like. I'll make it a wee bit bigger. Um, and then if you're happy with that, then you can you can go with that. The other thing we can do as well is we can actually um, rotate. So you may find that you may be you've put a, a, a wooden effect on the surface and the grain's running the wrong way. 
If that's the case, then by changing this number here, we can rotate the, the image, literally this image here that is being put on, and now the grain would be going up and down if that was wood rather than across. So using either the rotation or the scale, we can <coughs> modify the picture that's being put on our part and make it look more realistic. Okay, if you're happy with that, then what you can do is close that, um, apply this, and then that is now the um, the new version, if you like, of the brick pattern that we had. Um, <clears throat> another thing, uh, sometimes you may need to put a particular colour onto a part. So if I was just to select this one here, if I can find what that part is, um, it is, there we go, that one there, so part 6. So I want to put a colour on part 6. Um, <clears throat> I mean I could just apply uh, let's go for blue just for fun for now. So it's gone blue. Now you may be given a particular value or a particular colour in a project that you need to put onto it. How do you do that? Well up here again we can change this colour. So it, um, Inventor uses um, RGB so if you've been given a colour for example in CMYK you may, you'd need to put it into a converter and find out what the RGB values are for that particular colour. You could change this, you could just change it. Um, I put it, whatever the numbers are in. Once you're happy with the number, add it to custom colours and select it. And if we now look here, that is now, we've now got a, a magenta colour. So if I OK that, my, what was previously blue, is now this kind of mauvey magenta colour. So what we can do is we can change the scale or rotation of um, images and we can also change colors to to meet specific colors if we're given them for a project so when you are happy um, with all the materials on there we can close this browser obviously if you want to go back to it you can open it again just using a little rainbow wheel here um, and that's that, that's you done we're still in this sort of part sort of um, environment so we need to return to get back to our assembly um, and now if we were wanting to go to the next stage we'd look at the environments and look at Inventor Studio. At this point there may be other assemblies that you've dropped in as well. Um, again if you double clicked on those assemblies you could then change the uh, colours and material appearances in the same way.